kill switch. I'll go through this guitar in a minute. You know what? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I want to clear one thing up, though. I did not talk crap about Kerry Dahl. I always liked him. I've always liked him. I always thought he had a great show, cool image. Like I said in my... Th I Like I said, uh, Mike Schneider, he commented back because uh, he's right. I didn't read his response. So I was saying, you know, come on, man. Because da, da, da. this act went on for like, now this is like the fourth or fifth video where this, I'm just calling PBF. I'm not even saying the name anymore because the band sucks ass and that's it. And so does my fucking... So does my fucking microphone. <laughs> I know, I'm sure if you notice, it keeps dropping out. Isn't that great? So that's more money. That's it going down the tubes. So, I just wanted to say that I wasn't saying anything bad about Carrie. Carrie doll, I love you. 
You were great. I just wish I got a chance to make your band heavier earlier. I mean, I wasn't that good. I mean, my rhythm was great. Leads were like they are now almost. And just so everybody knows, I can't feel this hand, so I've had to relearn how to play. So when I'm shredding away, sometimes it gets a little crazy. But the whole point was that I wanted to be in the band, because I could see the show. He was the show. He was a great showman. I started remembering all the things he'd do. He'd come out with a shotgun with confetti in it. Bam! That scared the hell out of everybody. And, of course, in a coffin. And uh, I remember the one time he came down at uh, the stairs of the Troubadour. Most of the times I saw him were at the Troubadour. And then I think I went out to Anaheim or something and saw him a couple times there at the at radio, whatever it's called. But, Carrie, I love you. I got a ton of old pictures. I've got uh, bootlegs. I've got your forty, the, your EP that you put out and that Jesus poster, whatever that means. I would love Carrie to explain that poster. What does that mean? That he was, was he doing a... Like a taking a, doing the Antichrist thing, or was he born again? I don't know. Carrie Doll is Jesus, I think it says. You know, like, and all it was is these posters were everywhere. So I, boop, took a couple, took two. I always take two. But London Motley, Crue, well Motley Crue I didn't have to because they'd send them to me to hang up. So I was in hanging up the all the Motley Crue stuff you see around the valley. That was me. Alan Kaufman would send me the stuff, and I would do it. And then he'd give me, you know, get in free, and give me a bunch of t-shirts, and buttons, and stickers, and blah, 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 blah. So I just wanted to make clear that carried all. Cool. So we're done. Boop! As far as talking, I could just talk about myself and the stuff I did. Because I was uh, mentioning to someone the other day, oh, there's that chain. There's a chain that's supposed to be on this hat. Crap sakes. Um, yeah, there was a, this guy got in an accident. He was telling, oh no, he saw a van hit a fire hydrant, kind of went out of control, hit a fire hydrant, and flipped over once. He's like, oh, the guy's dead. I'm like, no, 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 no. I was in a van down by the river. I was in a van on the 101, 3 in the morning, going over. As soon as we hit 100 miles an hour, I wasn't driving, of course. Rudy, which is even worse, is driving. He turns the wheel to tell me, Hey, Michael, we're doing 100. But he turns the wheel. And so I just remember going, uh, ah! So apparently the girls behind us that were following us in like a Firebird or a Camaro. They said we flipped 12 times. And then we landed on the, well, what were the wheels? And it started to smoke. And they're like, oh, 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 oh. we could hear him, you know, crying. Three in the morning on the 101 in 1987, 8, probably 87, I think. Yes, 87, because it was October and my son's birthday was, I had a, I was, uh, yeah, using a crutch because my people were, at, someone was asking me, why were you using a crutch at your son's birth, I said I was in a van accident. I flipped in the thing 12 times. We were going 100 miles an hour, and all I did was break my big toe. But it took almost two days to figure it out down at County USC. Because they were going to keep me there because they thought I had broke my neck or fractured or something. And then somebody picked me up and moved me onto a gurney without the proper procedure or flyer, fired on the spot because they could have paralyzed me for life. I was freaking out. They had to cut. You know, drugging me because I was having anxiety attacks. And I thought, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And then my drummer's like laughing because when we were flipping, you know how these things go slow motion, stuff like this, everything just whoa. And I could see the big hairball, the big Cuban hairball. That's what I called him. Rudy Stiletto. I can't remember his last name, but it's Cuban. And his big hairball was going out the window. And I grabbed him and pulled him back in. And we went in between the seats. That's what saved our butt. Because he had an old uh, cargo van. So it had a cage. So the stuff in the back wouldn't fly up. That saved us. 
So the girls pulled us out and then took a, well, you know, I think I've told the story. But I told that guy that, and he's like, holy crap. I go, dude, that's nothing. I was in so many accidents because I was, uh, like I brought my friend's car. He had a Camaro, brand new Camaro. It was the 80s. I go, dude, because he wanted to borrow my truck. I had a little Chevy S10. He goes, can I borrow your truck? I'm like, yeah, give me your new Camaro. And he's like, sure. So I took it, and I figured I'd go down and pick this girl up, being my first wife, but it was like the ninth, the eighth, seventh or eighth attempt. And I was going to pick her up and take her out to dinner. Can't remember the year. It was 80-something. And I went and got her downtown, and we were on whatever that busy street is. Where it was a big hump there. So you can't see oncoming traffic. And she's like, Oh, we don't want to go this way. We want to go that way. I'm like, sure. I've had, you know, probably like a pint and five 40-ounce, you know, Millers. But that's just to, you know, keep me from... <laughs> and so I just flipped the car around. And, of course, as I was doing that, a car comes up. Bam! T-bones us. Hits me. I'm not injured because I'm drunk. I wish it was drunk accident 10 years ago. And she's like, oh, my gosh. Well, so much for dinner. That's all. And I'm like, yep, yeah, don't think it's going to happen. She goes, well, I'm going to call upstairs and call my mom, and she's going to take Okay, well, all right, see ya. And so I was stuck down there until they towed the car home. And they towed it to my house, and, of course, my friend was pissed off, and the insurance company ended up dropping him and his entire family for that one accident. So he said just because of that I had to let him use my truck for six months which is bull the guy's an idiot I never even talked to him anymore but the guy was a, a goofball he got his car fixed why does he need to use mine for six months it took like two months and when he got it back <laughs> this is funny when he got it back it drove down the street like this like if you're following him you're like what the hell because it just totally tweaked the frame, but he wanted that car fixed. And his dad was a uh, drag racer, and he knew a lot of guys that did auto work, and they said, okay, we'll fix it, but it ain't going to drive right, and they didn't. It was a baby blue Camaro. It was not cool. It's another thing. <laughs> so we're also in that car, same car, but he's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. My two drunk roadies are in the back car in front of us has the uh, fish for the Jesus thing. And this is the 80s. I was like, I didn't know anything. And I didn't know what it meant. And uh, my friend G Gary, he was in the back. He goes, hey, there's that fish. What does that mean? And the idiot, Dave, the wave, we'll just call him. He's like, oh, that's called the holy mackerel. It's for those Jesus freak bam and he rear ends the car. <laughs> That's what you get for calling somebody a Jesus freaking dummy. So there's two accident a couple accident stories, huh? Eh? Eh? <laughs>
right, so Steve Vai, I had it set up like his, but I made the huge mistake of putting this kill switch in, which they they crap out after a couple of months. <laughs> One volume, one volume, one kill, and this. That's nothing. That's that's why I never played this guitar. It's tuned down a whole step now. Okay, um, it's a great guitar though, it is, it kicks butt, but, the, the, <laughs> it came with something, like, uh, I don't know, whatever they put in his, I wanted the pickup that he had in his guitar at the time I got this guitar a few years ago, and it was called this pickup that Steve has and I put it in and it sucks it's a DiMarzio but it's not what I want it's not it's not crunchy enough it doesn't have that <laughs> get another pickup in it it shreds fine it just doesn't sound good and i can't go beep, 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 beep. so that's why i never play it but you can hold it there's the monkey grip so there's the guitar and yes it of course it's real i mean why wouldn't it be there you go a steve Vai basic gem it's like the gem. Nothing fancy about it. Um, no, I put a chrome. Woo. Thing I shouldn't have done was that kill. I want. I need to put a kill switch here. So, anyways, uh, let's talk about something else, shall we? So, Dio, we're not going to talk about. We're going to do that with Tracy. Uh, oh gosh, I could just tell stories and stories and stories, but. Like someone said, why don't you call up, or why don't you get hold of people that, you know, and so you can have a back and forth. That sounds great, but what do I do? Am I going to do this on the phone, and you'll just see me, and we'll hear it? 
Or should I do a podcast? Of course, people would rather have that, and that's what I'd probably do. If it's going to be a phone thing, because everybody I've ever been in a band with, out of all of them, two live in California. So, boop, I can go there. Uh, the rest live in Texas. I think a couple live in Las Vegas. Uh, up north, Oregon, I think, was one. And Florida. So that's not going to happen. That'll be a, you know, a call. And uh, a couple are way back east. If I'm going to talk to people that were in my bands or people that I knew. You know, I really didn't hang out with people a lot because I was too busy. To me, this was like, I'm down. You know, I partied way too much. That is true because you put something in front of me, I'm going to do it. But... And that was a mistake. That was a big mistake. But still, I was down there. I was there to make it. And I didn't... I was, a lot of people, like like this Mike uh, Schneider dude, he knows a lot of guys. There's another guy, my friend Dean Kenny, the drummer. He knows everybody. And he knows that what they're doing. And he knows what they did down in Hollywood. He knows all the band names, like Mike. He knows every, the history of every. I don't. I don't know all the crap that went on. I just know what I did. And I've got a lot of stories, but I can't really just think of them off the top of my head. Like I've told you the Lemmy story, you know, that's classic. So they're getting ready to do a 70th uh, anniversary, or 70 years old for Ozzy Idiot Born. Just so you know, I do not like Ozzy. To me, his career is built on blood. It's blood money. They have been receiving all the royalties that were supposed to go to Randy Rhodes or his family. They've been taking it, from what I understand. If I'm wrong, someone please tell me. But I actually, I don't talk to him too much about that because I don't want to talk about that kind of crap to the family. I just want to see how they're doing, you know, talk for a few minutes, 10, 15, and I'm out of there. And I'll go back in a couple years. I don't want to be a pest like other people. Or lie like the, oh, thank you for letting me perform at a, you didn't do anything. The last performance I saw down there, actually I saw went in on an off, de, off night. It was like a Thursday, just a Thursday. And there was a guy there from Italy doing a one-man thing with a drum, you know, a little thing where he's got a bass and drums, and he's playing guitar and singing. And he was doing Crazy Train and I don't know, all that stuff. And he was really good. He wasn't incredible, but he was really cool. It was good. And it's in the little, you know, entertainment dining area. It's a very small wine-tasting place. Not a place for big gigs at all. I mean, you can, if you can get 50, 60, 75 people in there, it's packed. And Burbank, <laughs> with their laws. So... And someone also said, why don't you redo those Randy Rhodes field trips? I will, but I'd like to take somebody with me. Maybe Jeff, that guy in the, the tribute band, just because he likes Oz... Or, not Oz. Randy, he never knew him, but he knows we have been talking to each other for 20-something years. I've met him, <laughs> I bought something off eBay, and he had a store, which sold like Star Wars stuff and a bunch of collectibles, but he also had Jacksons, and I'm like, what the hell's the deal with this guy? Turns out he's a Randy Rose fan, I'm like, hey, guess what? And I told him, you know, all the stuff about me and you know him it's not this big deal like i guess it is to some people that i know him to me it's not a big deal because it's like somewhat craig turner should be getting just as much glory as well craig turner was really a great guitar player he was unbelievably good probably i would say just as good as randy it's just he didn't get the chance he didn't get the shot he went for the second time for the replacement because Dolores sent him. 
but George also went. So it was like George, Craig, and Jake, and somebody else. I know Chris Holmes actually auditioned for Ozzy at one point. I don't, I don't know which time. He couldn't get his story straight, but he used to live in my garage. I'm sure I've told you that story. Chris Holmes lived in my garage for several months. Unbelievably crazy. <laughs> we start. We had a band called Rat Bastard. So this was like 92, 93. Yeah, because it, it took me a year just to clean off the gunk from Hollywood and just calm down and like, all right, let's do something. Rat Bastard. Chris is going to play guitar, I'm playing bass, Trey's singing, he can do a very good Blackie at that point, and all we needed was a really good drummer. We have, we did a couple demos, I had it out there on MySpace, but of course everything went bye bye on MySpace. But if I can find it again, I'll put it up, because it has pretty cool, sounds like Wasp, you like, oh, that's Wasp, that's Chris Holmes, you can tell, it's just total that, that sound. So, there you go. Um, I guess, you know, I really don't have anything to say today, except uh, thank you for subscribing, and thanks for commenting, the few people that do. And uh, I'm getting up there, but it's it's because of that Randy Rhodes freaking uh, soundboard recording I put up. It went past 10,000 10, views, which to me is not earth shattering because I've had it up for a few months and it just now hit over 10,000 and I've given it to I think almost every Randy site I, I don't know if I've given it to like Randy Rhodes remembered the one that run I don't know so I was just going to give a copy of that to them but is this really stuff you are interested in probably not you're probably already tuned out so I know I am <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 